Right. And the thing, I, I wanted to say a thing about the, the Ron Paul campaign. Um, it, it's a, a thing that I, I hate to do it, but I have to constantly be a party pooper to people who get, you know, they get all excited and yay, we have a candidate here. You know, he's, as far as I can tell, Ron Paul is actually honest and has integrity and is a decent human being. And how he can still be that while being in Washington is a complete mystery to me. But what I ask people is, let's say you totally, all your dreams come true. By some miracle, he's elected. By another miracle, they don't just kill him as soon as he is. By another other huge, gigantic miracle, he becomes president and for some reason Congress cares what he has to say and starts to implement his agenda. What is the ultimate goal of Ron Paul supporters? Is it something like this? Now, at long last, the little dot will sit down and write down on a piece of paper that we're allowed to keep more of what we earn. <laughs> what does that imply? It implies we're slaves. Voting for Ron Paul means I accept that I'm a slave. I accept that it's somebody else's decision. The people in Congress, they get to decide how much of what I earn I'll be allowed to keep. They get to decide what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. I'm just really excited that this new slave master will give us his holy permission to be more free than we were before. That's not good enough. And what is the, what of, one of the other corollaries of that is that, well, then the next slave master after that, even assuming a, a Ron Paul presidency, even a two-term presidency, well, after that, what if someone else gets in and reinstitutes all of it all over again? Right, which, of course, they were, you know, people say, we got to get back to the Constitution. Why? Because it worked so badly the first time. What if, if by a miracle you could get back, why does anybody think it wouldn't just march right back to where we are now? But the underlying point is that if you, as long as all your hopes and dreams ride on getting a guy on the proverbial throne who will tell you you're allowed to be free, or at least more free, you're not even free inside your own head. If you think you need somebody else and their legislation to write an official decree telling you you're allowed to keep what you earn, or at least some more of it, the enslavement problem is not in Washington, it's inside your own head. If you think you need the politician's permission... To be free, you're never, ever, ever going to be free, even if you happen to get a politician who gives you permission to be a little bit more free. And when people escape the mindset that we need the permission of the dot to be free, they'll suddenly find we don't need an election. We don't need a revolution. We don't need anything. We don't even have to pay attention to the dot. We don't need to overthrow it. We don't need to do anything to it. If we stop acting like it's our rightful master, it has zero power. None. And, of course, if one or two people do that, then it sends out its mercenaries and stomps on them. If 300 million do, that's the end. <laughs> Game exactly, over. Exactly. No more time. Right. And that's the point. I think there's a lot of people who are in the same boat that you and I seem to be on right now, which is uh, knowing and understanding this at a conceptual level. But it's uh, the part of in taking that and making it part of your everyday life that uh, that boggles the imagination of most people, myself included, when so much of our lives are dependent on the systems of control that they have set up for us as the uh, the perfect trap, because they trap us with their honey and then uh, keep us in line with their sticks uh, so it just it's a never never ending cycle in some ways so we have to find the way off and on that note we'll take a short break but we'll be back to talk more about this and some of the solutions that we can have for getting off of this treadmill right after this welcome back to the broadcast friends tonight we're talking to larkin rose of larkinrose.com so once again if you haven't been there i suggest you do go there and check out some of his writings and videos from the past and tonight we are discussing all of the myriad ways in which people can be conned into believing that there is some kind of need for government or campaigning against this or that government or uh, or trying to advocate for the government to allow them to do this or that but is that really necessary at all well, we already have uh, some callers on the line. So we have uh, Mark from uh, L.A., I suppose that's Louisiana, on the line. Mark, thank you for joining us tonight. What's on your mind? Yes, uh, uh, good evening. Thank you for having me. Uh, it was mentioned by either one or both of you that uh, about uh, democracy. 
And my question is, why do we even have to have democracy? Who says that we have to have democracy? Especially when I think that the, the democracy is the most evil institution ever devised by the devil, if you believe in such a thing. Uh, we shouldn't have a democracy. And should now, should we have a state? I, I think I've thought of ways of eliminating the state. I haven't been able to come up with a way to eliminating the state, but I have come up with many ideas about limiting the, the state that would have no resemblance to what we have presently. I think what you're doing is you're criticizing the present system, which is undesirable and very evil. But it doesn't mean we have to have what we have now. We don't even have to have what the founding fathers came up with. And it was at the time a magnificent thing, just like the model, you know, the, 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 the Model T was good for its time. You know, but it wouldn't be so good today, you know, compared to what we have today. Uh, I, I think the government has to be, especially the federal government, has to be more restrictive. We have to put beyond the reach of these scumbags, you know, people like Bush and Clinton and Obama and, you know, and all these myriad of scumbags that we have, you know, so that they wouldn't even get to government because there wouldn't be anything for them. You know, they would have to you know, just rob banks and, you know, and do other horrible things that, that they, the only thing that they would be capable of doing, you know, because they wouldn't be able to do anything productive, you know, because they're parasites at heart. Uh, well, the best way so to that's what we have to only. concentrate on, not to say, well, right. you know, well, we don't need the state because the state is so bad. Yeah, the state is as, as it presently is, but not what it could be. All right. Well, Larkin, I'm assuming this is probably not the first time you've heard that argument. What, what's your no, response not, to that? No, not the first or the hundredth or the thousandth. The problem is the state cannot ever be anything other than a violent, immoral, destructive, thieving, murdering gang of parasites. Government, by its very nature, is an aggressive, violent monster. If we remove every ingredient that makes it that, it ceases to be government. It, we can have organization, we can have cooperation, we can have all sorts of things. But as, if it still counts as government, it's because it is still viewed as a ruling class, a legitimate ruling class by its victims. And that is the problem. It is the, it isn't what is in Washington that is the problem. It's the fact that people hallucinate legitimacy to the violence that the gang in Washington exerts over hundreds of millions of people. As long as people imagine that that's okay, that that's necessary and civilized and everything else, and focus on trying to bicker about what form of parasitic thief it should be, we never are going to actually achieve real freedom. Um, I would agree that democracy is... is heinously ridiculous it's one of the best things that ever happened for tyrants because it allowed them to keep being tyrants while giving people the illusion that they have some say and tricking people into thinking that they're consenting like you get to choose which of these two people is going to kick you in the head and steal your stuff and that means you're in charge you know that's the lie we're taught about democracy but I think ultimately there can't be such a thing as a useful or a moral or a legitimate government. If it ever got to be legitimate, it wouldn't be government anymore because it wouldn't be robbing us and, and bossing us around in ways that, you know, your neighbor doesn't have the right to do. If I don't have the right to do it to you, then the entire Congress and all of their mercenaries don't have the right to do it to you either. And that, that just comes down to the perception of the victim of tyranny, actually. actually, doesn't matter what the politicians think. If the people they try to rob and stomp on stop imagining it to be legitimate, that's the end. If we just bicker about how they should stomp on us and rob us, then we sort of get nowhere. I, um, I, I certainly see your, your point there, and I think um, perhaps you and Mark really aren't so in, in such disagreement as, as my think. I mean, I think it, it all hinges on, on our definition of organization and cooperation and what that could look like. And I'd like to get more into that. But we also have another caller holding on the line. We have Ken in Virginia. So let's bring Ken into the conversation. Ken, what's on your mind tonight? 
Yes, well, you, you've been talking about the perception of the people and, the, and how you have to change their perception. It's not a question of perception. The fact is that the government is, is in, actively engaged in killing us, and, and we cannot have, uh, uh, with, with chemtrails, with fluoride, with sp spreading viruses deliberately among the population, this is and this is what we and this is what we can change. And uh, so you you have to you have to uh, focus. I mean, that, that we have to uh, to work on, of course, and also through wars. They're trying to kill us, and they're they're doing a a good job because they're making more and more people sick, and uh, and they are going to. Uh, kill, and of course, uh, through the hormone stuff uh, and and Monsanto, uh, uh, killing killing our, our crops and killing everything, and that's what they're engaged in. And so, unless you, uh, uh, so we cannot be content with just changing our perception. That's not that's not going to do it. We've got to stop the government from killing us. And I I think that uh, you 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 uh, and. And incidentally, I, I, I did watch uh, uh, I did watch the uh, debate tonight, and and uh, Gingrich was very respectful of Ron Paul on the Federal Reserve. So we're making headway on on that score. So, but I wanted to get get that through uh, to you. Uh, well, well, thank you for that. But I, I'm not really sure is that is that an argument for government? I must completely disagree. They, I don't at all disagree that they're trying to, to stomp on us and, and kill us off and weaken us and enslave us and everything else. But if we treat the symptom, if we go to the government and say, we have to make them stop doing it, that's actually a perfect illustration of why perception is the entire problem. How do they get the money to do that? They get it from 100 million people who feel a moral obligation to give a percentage of what they earn to a gang of parasites and thieves. How do you think they'd harass us and, and spray and do whatever else if there weren't a hundred million human beings who perceive them as a legitimate authority and so give them several trillion dollars a year? If the slaves stop imagining the slave master to have any rightful ownership over them, they stop playing along. They stop picking the cotton for him and the slave master has nothing. Everything they have, you know, the par they're a parasite class. They don't produce anything of wealth. All of the wealth they have, they stole from the people who produced it. And the only reason they could do that is because the people who produced it have been duped into imagining that that's a legitimate setup, that that's valid and moral for this gang of parasites to rob us. All of the nasty things they do are funded by the value we create. You and me and the 100, 200 million other productive people who actually do something of value. If we stop imagining an obligation to fuel them, the game's over. You don't have to overthrow them. You don't have to demand this or that legislation. They have nothing if we stop hallucinating them to be our rightful lords and masters. They're not. They're a gang of crooks. Again, I think that's pretty much the case, and I think it's all a question of how we can just get off the systems uh, that they've implanted for us. But uh, on that note, we have uh, another caller online. We have Tom in Arkansas. So, Tom, uh, what's on your mind tonight? Yes. Um, my comment would be um, the governments, and I say plural governments, the Western industrialized world, as they say, are simply fronts for the financial oligarchy. And uh, the conversation tonight, we we forget that that's why government, uh, one of the reasons that they have governments is to, to fade the heat, to uh, be the, the veneer, the facade for the true power uh, that owns and absolutely controls these various governments, including our own around the world. It's the financial oligarchy of the world that is in total control. And any form of uh, government that's devised that leaves this financial oligarchy in place is doomed. You, uh, you have to go after the disease, uh, the symptom, 
uh, uh, is not going to do a bit of good to treat or attempt to cure it because that is not the disease.